the next field is the payment term what is a payment term like we discussed a payment term dictates how your customer pays you it's a schedule of payment a simple payment term could be net zero or this one it's commercially called net zero which means pay within zero days which is immediately now let's look at this example 002 which says pay within 45 days but if you pay within 30 days you get a cash discount of 2% and if you pay within 14 days you get a cash discount of 3% in general this is written like this the payment terms is called net 45 comma 3% 14 days and 2% 30 days so that percentage represents the cash discount that the company is going to give their customers in gratification of the customers early payment so essentially if you pay within 45 days yeah the company is happy but if you pay within 14 days the company is more than happy and they'll let you pay only 97 percent of what you're supposed to pay If you're supposed to pay $100, just pay $97 is what that 3% says. The specific term for it is called cash discount. All right, As opposed to other in instant discounts that are applied as part of your invoice. But we'll see the different discount terms when we come to pricing. All right, the next field is the reason for a rejection. What's this reason for rejection? What are we rejecting here essentially? Let me take this transaction and I think I timed out. Let me log in again. opened up this transaction go to VA01 order sales org distribution channel division enter our customer then click OK let's say we enter a bunch of materials M01 M03 M04 M05 so on and so forth Okay. And then we save this order by filling up whatever is necessary. If you think something is not filled up, you go fill it up and click on save. Now let's say the customer calls back tomorrow and says, "Hey, you know what? I placed an order yesterday for this set of goods." And I think I'm, I'm not going to be needing uh, item number three. What do you do then? So go to VA02 and open up the transaction that your customer is talking about. And then there are a couple of options for you. The first option is just select that line item and then click on this button uh, with a red dash which just says delete item. Okay then say yes that's going to remove that item okay but that's not the preferred option so i'm not going to save it i'm going to go back and do you wish to save your data no let me go in again go to this tab called reason for rejection and against this line item 30 put a reason for rejection you know whatever it is he doesn't want this because the last time the goods that we supplied were of a poor quality 
well okay and we're gonna put that reason for rejection there and then click on save done okay that's reason for rejection now you can define your own reason for rejection that's what I meant by freely definable but what is the difference between reason for rejection versus deleting that line item why really are we doing this reason for rejection as opposed to deleting that line item now deletion of line item number one is not really capturing what is the reason why we are deleting that line item well he might just talk over the phone and talk to our sales rep and say I'm, I don't want it because of quality but there should be some way for the sales rep to really capture that reason and that could be captured via this reason for rejection based on the drop down so that way your senior management will get a nice report that says okay out of all the orders that have been placed this month so many items have been rejected because of quality so many items have been rejected because of uh, competition better than us or whatever be their reasons for rejecting that line item so that's why sap always suggests that we put a reason for rejection as opposed to deleting line items now the second and third points over here which are stopping transfer of requirements and cancelling reservations uh, require some understanding of TOR which is called transfer of requirements and stock reservations um, made against existing stock by transactions so we're gonna just hold off on to that and we'll not discuss them as part of this class but as part of another class we will definitely be discussing transfer of requirements and reservations and we will briefly touch upon the reason for rejection at that point all right moving on document flow what is a document flow and we have seen what a document flow is already how a quotation spawns a order how an order spawns one or more than one deliveries and how you can track back from the delivery back to the order and back to the quotation sometimes this flow could be pretty intimidating so you could have one quotation and then order one and then order two against this order you could have delivery one and then delivery two delivery three so on and then over this we have delivery three you know delivery four delivery five and then this will have invoice one invoice two and then so on you know it could be pretty complicated you know especially with big orders so a document flow is very handy if you want to track back um, you know what really has transpired you know, when there was this invoice created what was the corresponding delivery that triggered this invoice to be created uh, was this delivery created as a single delivery or as multiple deliveries as part of a single order did this order refer to a quotation or it did not refer to a quotation right this is called as a document flow now document flow could be both at the header level as well as at the line item level at the header level as well as the line item level we'll have a separate video on what is document flow at the header level versus document flow at the line item level how to view the document flow at the line item level and what is the effect of this document flow when or how to see the effect of delivery splits or invoice splits or order splits as part of troubleshooting or as part of uh, user auditing and other use cases where you might want to use document flow all right the next button talks about uh, or the next topic is order combination again order combination is something that we have seen in the customer master the order combination field is used when you want to combine multiple orders into a single delivery so order one 
order to can be combined into a single delivery if the goods are going to the same destination and they're going on the same day etc and some other conditions are fulfilled so again this is a priority or this is a, a preference set by the customer at the customer master level and that just flows down into the transaction and you can always uncheck this at the transaction level and say hey you know what for this transaction order combination is not recommended by the customer so uncheck it all right billing schedules and billing dates again flow down from the customer master but we are kind of ignoring it for now because um, in order to learn about invoice dates and billing dates uh, we will have to wait a little more until we get to billing uh, same with categorization of revenue into buckets uh, we don't want to really understand categorization of revenue into buckets at this point so let's not bother about this or let's not bother about this but the reason why i put it out there is because these are important topics and uh, we are supposed to cover them by the end of this course and i want you to really understand all of them but this is not the right time for that so let's wait until we cover some additional topics and then we'll be more comfortable learning these okay the next topic is pricing well we're just going to look at it because it's a very very vast subject and it will take close to three to four hours uh, to really understand pricing and at least do a single hands-on of the basic price list and basic discount now the keyword here is conditions because pricing uses what is called as a pricing condition technique this is proprietary SAP method to um, perform pricing using a variety of parameters so like I said pricing is a pretty complicated subject so we're not going to get there until probably very late in the course maybe 25th day and that's when we're going to discuss pricing so until that point we're not going to get to pricing but we should understand but this is where you can see the prices like the where's what is the price what is the tax what is the cost associated with it and what is the discount associated with it so on and so forth and what is the profit margin what is the net before tax and what is the net after tax so on and so forth so if i ask you a question and say what is the total tax for this line item 20 you should be able to go to the line items and then look at the MWST or whatever tax condition is out there and the percentage and the corresponding amount that was calculated all right next we have texts what are texts texts are little pieces of information that are you know essentially texts as they are they're nothing more than texts it could flow down from a previous transaction or it could flow down from master data or they could be entered in the system by a user or by somebody in the warehouse so let's take an example so there is a customer who is very finicky about his goods and he always complains so we make a note against the customer in the customer master and say um, you know uh, extra care while shipping okay we don't want to get more trouble from this customer so we say extra care while shipping now there is a material some material which is let's say uh, you know fragile so we say it's fragile or take extra care while shipping so on so whatever it is now let's create a quotation for this customer for this material uh, 
line item 10 for this material when we create this quotation this text will automatically come and sit in the quotations header and this text will automatically come and sit in the line item now when you create an order with reference to this quotation automatically these little pieces of texts now it could be as simple as handle with care or extra care while shipping or fragile so these texts will come and sit in your order and when you create a delivery from this order these texts again if required can be transferred over to the delivery where the delivery clerk will be able to make some decision like you know put some extra foam or extra padding to make sure that you know they get don't get broken so on once again we're going to talk more about texts what is text determination how to set these texts how to create new text types how to make the text flow from the previous transaction to the current transaction and all that good stuff as part of what is called as text determination okay so until that point you can just consider text as little pieces of information that can flow from master data down into transactions and from one transaction to another transaction all right additional data a and additional data b so up until this point we have seen quite a number of fields and all those fields are standard provided by sap but what if your business requires fields um, that are not provided by sap you might ask me what are those fields can you give me some examples sure let's say hp um is um is selling and is implementing a plan to attract more customers now i'm just taking hp as an example because we have been taking that example all along but you could really take any large volume customer or company now what hp is doing is it's dividing its customers into tiers let's say hp is selling computers to some universities some you know colleges some corporates some individuals so on and so forth now because they buy in bulk not the individuals but the universities colleges and corporates hp has divided them into multiple uh, discount brackets where you say okay for all sales that happened from the first of the e first of the january until this point if the total sales is less than 10 million you are in the discount bracket of two percent this is just discount that's given based on volume of sales okay and let's say 10 to 20 you get four percent and then uh less than 30 million you get six percent or you call them tier 2 tier 2 tier 4 tier 6 or tier 5 whatever they are and each tier will have a respective discount maybe tier 2 will have three percent discount and tier 4 will have five percent discount tier 6 will have eight percent discount so these are tiers that are associated with that customer retroactively meaning after all the sales have been done they will run a program hp will run a program that will compute all the sales that happen until the beginning of this year and then decide which bracket discounting bracket they should go to now this is something that sap is not built out of the box for isn't it meaning this brackets is a term that's something that only this particular company uses so what we can do is assign that field to the customer master and in the sales transaction let's say the users always want to know which bracket discount bracket this customer belong to so in the additional data b you can see that it's a blank canvas there's nothing in there by default so go here and then you can start customizing this field and say 
put a text here called bracket and there will be a text box here which says you know he is in the third discount tier or fifth discount tier or seventh discount tier so on now this customization cannot be done in spro you would i mean your abap programmer would have to customize this okay you cannot go to spro pull a couple of switches and then perform this um, additional data b tab customize i mean adding additional fields to the additional data b tab that's not just not possible in customization you would have to write a functional specification which describes the fields that should be available there how they should be populated if you should be able to update them so on and so forth and your abap consultant will do that using what is called as dialog programming which is something related to programming we don't need to worry about it okay now the net net of it is if you want to have additional fields in the additional data b or additional data a uh, that your business demands then you can always go there and start putting in additional fields and your abap consultant will help you in getting those fields up there and modifying the respective tables do the corresponding dialog programming for insertion updation deletion so on and so forth okay i can talk about more scenarios here um, but i would rather have you stop here and understand how to use additional data b and that should be more than enough for now okay and next is can you delete sales orders can you delete sales orders well we know at this point that we cannot delete customer masters or any master data but can you delete sales orders yes you can there is a specific menu path for it you can delete sales orders like create an order and then you can delete an order by clicking on that now sometimes deliveries or orders cannot be deleted and when you try to do that you get this error now when can you delete things and when can you not delete things here is a thumb rule if there is a subsequent transaction to it be it at the header level or the line item level okay if there is anything subsequent then cannot delete okay example order 1 line item 10 m01 line item 20 m02 can you delete it yes you can delete now line item 2 is delivered after delivering can you delete this guy no you cannot delete it cannot because there is a subsequent transaction associated with that line item okay if there is a subsequent transaction associated with a line item you cannot delete that particular line item same with the order if there is any subsequent transaction associated with that um order let's say some delivery has been created with respect to that order then you cannot delete that order okay either way the preferred way is not to delete transactions it's always to put a reason for rejection okay and you know the reasons why okay this button is called availability check okay and this button is view availability check or view availability okay so we'll talk about availability um at a later point so we know that this button is what is used to do schedule lines and this button is used to do pricing you can you don't need to go to these buttons you can always go to the line item and then click on the schedule lines tab or the conditions tab in fact this button will take you to this screen 
and this button will take you to the conditions screen okay now between the header and the line item there is a ton of data that's actually shared like the header data contains the partners tab the line item data also contains the partners tab the header data contains shipping data the line item data line item also contains shipping data same with texts billing additional data but why why are we replicating data between the header and the line items here is a simple reason why the same data partner data for example could differ between the header and line items again let's take an example here is the header where we are saying ship the goods to san francisco but line item 10 should be shipped to let's say new york and 20 should be ship shipped to san francisco so the header data is generally applicable to all the line items but at the line item level you can always change the shipping data in this case the ship to same with bill to the entire order at the header level is net 30 payment terms which is in the billing data but line item 20 the customer says hey you know what i can't do net 30 just for this line item can you do net 40 or net 45 if you are okay with it you can do it changing the payment terms at the line item level to be different than the header level so the thumb rule again is data from the header percolates down to the sales line items example payment terms in term, shipping point ship tools texts so on if you want the data to be different for a particular set of line items say like the examples that we have taken we want to ship some goods to new york as opposed to the header san francisco you want to ship uh, the goods with the payment terms of net 45 only for 20 line item but for the rest of the line items you don't want to do that in all these cases data at the line item level can be made to change right and that's why data is generally replicated between the header and the line item level all right so that's all for uh, day five and uh, we'll have a q and a session tomorrow okay i'm marking this um file so that uh, you know you realize that this is the end of the file